Typically, where is all return solenoid located for a YK? Would it be on the adductor? Yes, so it is actually in the back of the adductor. What, so this is where the size of the machine does have an impact. So this would be a little bit of a smaller one. Some of the larger ones have a bit of a different design where the tank is down or the sump is down on the bottom underneath the condenser and the piping and stuff for the adductor assembly all runs down there and that changes the exact location of the solenoid itself along with the filter and whatnot but in a general parameter this line right here is the the hot gas line coming off of the top of the condenser feeding into the adductor assembly so there is a adductor block inside of here again some of the other models have a slightly different adductor assembly so this will vary a little bit but the overall core basic here of how york is doing this will stay relatively similar You've experienced how difficult quality chiller training is to get. I've spent over a decade working as a chiller tech on everything from air-cooled scrolls to large-scale centrifugals in manufacturing facilities. I'm tired of seeing how hard it is to get quality training and support. So I built the resource that I always wanted. I'm offering the help you're looking for, and we can get started today for free chilleracademy.com so this hot gas line coming in here and then we have our eductor line coming right here so there's a valve down here off the side of the evaporator this particular one is a falling film style evaporator so this is our eductor filter and this is the solenoid valve that controls that eductor system when it needs to go into a recovery state on the oil side it will energize this valve, open this assembly, and begin to allow the hot gas get pushing in through the eductor assembly to start siphoning that oil latent refrigerant off the top of the liquid level of the evaporator. Now, I do want to clarify and just put a reminder out there. This is where your liquid level control is really important for controlling the eductor feed. So the top few inches while your machine is running, which is when your adductor is going to work because it doesn't work at a standby. So the top few inches of your refrigerant liquid level are going to be mixed with oil because as the, the refrigerant stuff is boiling, the oil is going to get caught into the top of that and it's going to get mixed in as your oil latent refrigerant right at the top of the liquid level section. And that is where you want your adductor to be pulling from. So if you're running too low of a liquid level on your evaporator, you'll start to push down and you won't have as much success getting that oil laden liquid refrigerant to pull back into the adductor assembly. So that's something to be aware of, which could then lead to, you've already got a low level in your evaporator, which is going to impact its operation and efficiency. But then you add it getting oil logged because you're not getting up to where that adductor port is. Then you could start causing even more issues with oil logging. So, Whenever you, with a YK, you're going to set the liquid level set point based off the condenser level, but you have to pay attention to what that means on your evaporator side and where that liquid level is in the evaporator. And so these things have to have a bit of a balance. We, I've talked heavily in the past through other means about how we need to set the condenser levels on our YKs for a proper operation, but we cannot ignore where the evaporator level is in that process. These two go hand in hand. That also means that when we have a high liquid level in the evaporator, we have high potential of pulling back a lot of basically just pure liquid refrigerant. It's not even oil latent. And what that can cause, especially in this particular style of a sump assembly, is the very top of the sump when we run really high liquid levels can start to frost and freeze up here. You'll actually see a frost film begin to form. And this is for this particular style because the adductor block in this style is right here and the ports push in right here at the top of the adductor or of the sump itself. So basically what's happening is if the liquid level is too high and we're drawing in just mostly pure refrigerant and it's not actually oil latent to dilute it down, then one, your oil is still going to be stacking in the evaporator because your eductor intake port is lower than the oil level itself that is in the evaporator. But then 
you're going to be sending straight liquid refrigerant from the evaporator into your sump assembly. And that's where it gets injected and it hits the top of the sump here. It begins to form a little bit of an ice shield or not shield, but there's going to be some ice formation. And it gets really cold. It makes me sweating a whole lot right in here where normally it wouldn't do that. Like this sump assembly shouldn't be sweating and the rest of the tank won't be, but it'll, it will be just right in this region. And that is one of the symptoms of too high of a liquid level in the evaporator. Or if you're having an issue with your discharge port here, not actually sending proper discharge gas, that could also cause an issue as well. That's something to look for. And we have to be very careful in where we're maintaining that liquid level in those machines so that we, when we are using that solenoid valve to control the system or to control the adductor oil recovery system, that we're not undershooting or overshooting. And there is this little sweet spot, which York specifies they want to see right about half glass. Like in a perfect world, their evaporator, when everything is balanced and tuned correctly, is going to run about half glass in that sight glass. So that you should be targeting about that region. And if you do see, say, if you start to see a oil film, which will have this kind of yellowish tint to it in your evaporator and the level is low, especially, then you may want to consider maybe your evap your level is too low on the evap. Now you could also have an inductor system issue. That solenoid could have an issue. That valve could have an issue. Somebody may have serviced the filter and forgot to open the valves. That could be an issue. The inductor filter itself could be clogging up. That could be an, like, so there's all kinds of things that could be causing your oil to stack in the evaporator naturally, but having a low level will definitely do that. So that's something to look for. At the same time, if you're seeing a high level where you're above the halfway point considerably in most cases, and you walk around to the sump and you see that it's condensating at minimum quite heavily there at the back end of it, then you've probably got too high of a level and you need to evaluate why is it that high and what can we do to lower it? You may have an overcharge. It also may be just a poor set point on the condenser side. There was a time when, especially in these older machines, when the metering or the variable orifice valve was first getting implemented, when they were transitioning away from the orifice plates for the original YKs, that it was just common practice that, you know what, those metering valves, the, the PID for them just had too many issues. We're just going to remove that because it's just creating a problem and they would manually open that valve or they would adjust the set points to where the valve would basically just stay open all the time. What that would do though in many times it would cause, especially if you do that on a newer machine which has significantly improved since the early versions, you'll see that evaporator level just run way too high. You'll run hardly anything on the condenser. It cause all kinds of problems there. So some things you can, and I still see on occasion, like even on some of my, my my videos, people will still comment about just setting those variable orifice valves on the YK to just basically be full flow all the time. I just don't agree with that practice. That is where your return solenoid is for the inductor system. And then some thoughts around making sure you're controlling that properly.